figure subscription service number eight from the G.I. Joe Collectors Club has arrived. Today we look at a figure of a character that I have been wanting for quite some time. Munisha. Here we have Munisha on the card. As you can see the figures right there and the art is right there. It's got the vintage G.I. Joe logo up there and a vintage Hasbro logo down there. This she is a Cobra mercenary. I'm having to hold this up because now the figure decides to stand up or the, the package decides to stand up. Alrighty, we'll flip this thing around now that we got it standing up finally. It doesn't stand up very well. It's got a very crazy little bubble there. So on the back, we've got a bigger piece of art. We've got the file card there. And on the side, G.I. Joe Club Exclusive 8, representing figure subscription service number 8. And this is the 10th release of the final G.I. Joe Club figure subscription service. All righty. Hey, she's standing up. The, figure, the toy is standing up. So let's take a look at the file card real quick. She is a Cobra mercenary, codename Munitia. File name is unknown, and she uses various aliases. Primary military specialty is mercenary operations, and the secondary military specialty is bounty hunter. Her birthplace is, well, unknown. Munitia is equally skilled in the use of tactical assault rifles and a variety of bladed weapons. Anyone in close proximity to her is suddenly and savagely chilled to the bone. Her icy presence sucks the warmth out of everything and everyone in a room. Her eyes watch you the way a predator calculates its prey. Her face is devoid of all emotion. Nothing pleases her, frightens her, or surprises her. She is tenacious. She is a tenacious mercenary that is cool and in control at all times. Munitia's ability to guess the actions of others has made her a supreme bounty hunter. Her original contract with Cobra allowed her the opportunity to be part of the HISS, the hierarchy of infiltration, stealth, and sabotage, with Firefly and Blackout. However, with her single-minded passion for bringing in high-value targets, Cobra Commander might ha just have another team assignment for her in the future. There is a quote or a, a saying down here. Emotions make you weak and vulnerable. Stay cold and you stay alive. Yeah, that's the best I could do. Anyway, we're all about opening boxes or toys, I guess, in this case. So let's get her opened up. All right, here she is back and open. So let's get her out of the plastic prison. Ooh, look at that. Another bit of a surprise there. All right, so let's take a quick peek. Actually, we can still see pretty much all the card art, so let's get rid of this. And the bottom bubble contains a figure stand. It's been interesting. Some of the figures have figure stands in a package. Some of them are taped, and some of them are loose. There's like no consistency. It's very fascinating. So here she is, in her still in her like plastic coffin thingy here. So Munitia here is an update to the original Munitia. <laughs> I suppose I kind of led myself down a bad path when I said update. So anyway, uh, we may need to do something here with this tape. Looks like some uh, pretty good tape. Let me grab something. I usually don't cut tape in this accessory area because I don't. That's why. Anyway, so I decide maybe I better do it in this case. These are some rather big items that are taped up here. And I don't like doing cutting stuff on camera. Because someone somewhere will tell me, you're doing it wrong. I do it my way. I teach knife safety. And my way is a safe way. So there. <laughs> All right. So anyway, she is an update of version 1. The version 1 figure was a delayed direct-to-consumer figure that was released by the club as an exclusive in 2009. I missed out getting on that figure, but I'm pretty excited to have this figure. 
Uh, so this is a modern update. So real quick, why don't we just take a peek? We've got her out. We, she only has like three accessories. So she's pretty straightforward. She's made up of two different figures. The torso waist area is all Agent Helix version one from 2009. And the legs and the arms are from the Rise of Cobra Scarlet version 11, also from 2009. And that's it. Oh, oh, the head you say. Well, pretty confident. I don't know this for a fact, but I'm pretty confident this just might be a brand new head sculpt because I don't remember seeing anybody who looks like this. It's pretty unique with these uh, goggles up here. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's a new head sculpt. If I'm wrong, please let me know. I didn't look for it at all. I didn't even try. So anyway, here she is. She's all decked out in black and silver and like a dark cobra blue. Cobra blue, I think, is usually a little bit lighter than this, but this is like a darker one. She just looks menacing, doesn't she? Do you want to meet her in a dark alley? Oh, man. She stands up really, really well. So what does she come with? Well, we see her, 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 her figure stand that says munition on it. She also comes with, let's see if I can hold this little dinky tiny thing up. It's a teeny weeny thing. It's a little black cell phone. <laughs> I'm glad they don't make iPhone-sized cell phones uh, without antennas. Those would be very hard to hold. She's got a black rifle. Oh, yeah, I can see her you know, using that thing right there. And she's got one of the weirdest weapons I have seen in a while. I have looked and I looked. If you know if this is a real weapon, let me know. I cannot find this anywhere. I believe this is made up. And it's like a pistol blade. It's a... It's a... I don't know if it's a remold or an update, or, sorry, retooling or, or an update. She had, a, her version one had one of these types of weapons. It may have been this one, I don't know. Redone. So, there's really not a lot to this figure. This, that's her. She can bend her arms up uh, about that far because of these uh, little blue shoulder pads up here. If we rotate her arms, then they go straight up. She's, she's, she's slender. She's really mobile. And they rotate all the way around. There's no hindrance whatsoever. The elbow, there, there's nothing there. I mean, there's no hindrance at all. They bend, they back and forth almost as far. The wrists rotate all the way around. There is no rocker motion in these wrists. And the head, let's get her kind of more like this. This is what her head does, and it rotates all the way around. I don't know how many more times I'm going to say she's got really no hindrance whatsoever. Her waist, not her waist, her chest allows her to rotate all the way around, and she has a bit of a, that much of a movement there. If she was to jump out of an airplane, her legs go back out that far. If she were to sit in something, okay, hindrance, the belt. If she were to sit, she has about that much of an angle. And I think that is due to these the blue belts here, which I'm looking around and I don't see the blue belts, the blue belt with pouches. I'm not seeing a way of taking that off. She's got a standard double joint, and because there's next to no hindrance, look at that joint. That's 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 ninja worthy right there. That's really crazy how far her legs bend. And her ankles rotate all the way around, her lovely silver boots. And if she, okay, you know what? She's not ever going to be anywhere in the League of a Ballerina, but if she were to go on point, she could do that. And the opposite of that allows her to do that. So that's her range of motion right there. She's just, she's a meanie. Yeah, we don't want to meet her anywhere. So really and truly, there's not much more for me to say about this figure. That's about it. That's pretty straightforward. There was only ever one other version. She wasn't in any official comic book that I'm aware of, or she was never in a cartoon. She was in the club comic here and there, and there are foreshadowing and aftershadowing and top shadowing and before shadowing and below shadowing. Whatever shadowing you want to talk about. She's got uh, a lovely cobra, silver cobra symbol there and there. 
And I guess I didn't talk about it. She's in, like, all black leather types. Oh, I did mention all that stuff with some blue uh, accents there. She's got silver there. She's got pouches all the way around on her belt and on her right leg. And uh, she's got a harness around her torso area, but there's no backpack to go on. But everyone has a... a I suppose you could put a backpack on, and that's what that means. But there you go. She's got this... This isn't hair. This is... Uh, in fact, if I have to say one thing, the disappointment about this figure, maybe the character, not this figure, but this character, is that this is such a weird head covering. Usually you see these types of head coverings for someone who's going to be like out in the sun or out in the desert or something. So it's kind of weird. I guess maybe since she's white, it's to help block the whiteness of her neck so she's not as visible. I don't know. It's, it's interesting, though. Because you would think then the front of her face would then be masked as well in black. Well, this is going to be a pretty short video because there's really not much to her. This is It's a cool figure. I like the figure. I'm so excited. I'm actually pretty happy I have this one since I never got version 1. I've actually enjoyed all of these. But I'm going to have a recap video on all the FSS8 uh, figures coming up soon. So anyway, that's, that's Munisha. Let's spin her around. Thank you for stopping by. If you want to drop me a line, please do so in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to be notified of future videos, please hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon next to it. I will see you next time.